Welcome to Make Life Fun. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, founder of Backroads Coaching, where we pave our own path to self-acceptance. Think of me as your self-love bestie, here to guide you, support you as you let go, rewrite the thoughts and beliefs that are blocking you from loving yourself and living your best life. This season, we are talking business, pleasure, love, money, and of course, all things motherhood. Welcome, welcome back, listeners, to the Make Life Fun podcast. Welcome to a beautiful new episode. We are in 2023. Wow. I just keep saying we made it. (laughs) We got here and we should be so proud of ourselves. And I have my beautiful friend here today, Jen Colby, on the podcast, gracing us with her beautiful presence. Jen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here. Long time (laughs) listener. (laughs) First time guest. We're all big heart. <laughs> that. Thank you. Thank you. I would love for you to tell our listeners today a little bit about you. What's on your heart right now? What are you passionate about? I'm really passionate about doing fewer things, but more passionately and more in a more focused way and really digging deep into who we really want to be and what we really want to be. I feel like I've been on a multi-year journey about that, but I've been spending the last two years in particular going through a change of like a change of life cycle, a change of job cycle and leaving a big institution and going out on my own and going through the grief process of that and identity and who I was in that career for 17 years. And then who am I standing on my own and what's my place in the world? And I have just really felt like there's just been this constant like peeling back of the layers of what fits and what doesn't fit and shedding a bunch of that stuff. And I'm super excited to help other people do that too. And I just, I recently had a friend describe this as who are you as the answer to the question, who are you perfect to help? And that is who you were five minutes ago. I don't know where that quote originally came from, but boy, (laughs) I've been thinking a lot about how to help people who were, are today where my husband and I were like five years ago, just struggling and wondering what to do and wondering what was next and how to even get there. And if we would ever get there and where there even was (laughs) any of it. And what's been what I am really proud of is that this I'm sort of completing this two-year cycle 2023 is February 2021 is when I left my job so I'm really coming to the exact two-year cycle my whole career has been in agriculture and this work of helping people work on personal development and all different aspects of the working on the things that we can control and letting go of the things that we can't control outside of us that isn't brought up in agriculture at all. It's never brought up in agriculture. I thought that maybe that was just a Northeast US thing, you know, because I'm I'm from Vermont, like, and I work in the New England area historically, and I've now had the chance to travel around to other parts of the country and work with other kinds of farmers and ranchers. And nope, nope, it's still not talked about. Like, we don't talk about ourselves. We just talk about our animals. We talk about our farms and ranches. We talk about lots of things. We don't really talk about working on ourselves. So I'm really excited to really dig into that work this year. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So much goodness. I'm so excited. You are doing for yourself. You're doing for the world. And speaking of agriculture, you host the podcast, Choosing to Farm. I do. And so I would love for you to tell us a little bit about that podcast. Oh, sure, sure. So that came out of this long career that I had my in thinking about the my most favorite thing in the world was talking to farmers about what they do and just sort of hanging out with them and just sort of the conversation by the truck in the parking lot at the end of the workshop was always like my favorite thing. I realized that the experience that I had as a person who was the first generation to farm in multiple generations. So 
that I had to to break a lot of ground. I had to learn a lot of things on my own. I thought I was alone. I thought I was just sort of a weird case. And that's not actually what's happening is agriculture is changing. And there are a lot of new people in agriculture and they want to do regenerative agriculture. They want to be part of growing and raising food for people. They want to be part of this solution, climate change solution, all of these things. And they are having to break new ground. And so choosing to farm is for these first generation folks. And we talk about all different kinds of things like the process, how they fell into farming. Lots of times because they're not growing up on farms or ranches, they they start as nurses, they start as art teachers, they, <laughs> they, start, they start in these corporate lives and they find themselves being called to it. Lawyers, like I have, yeah, one of my favorite podcast interviews was with a fellow who was a lawyer who is now a bison rancher. Like wow. what's the trajectory of yeah. that? And so those are the conversations that we have is how people get there, you know, how they think about business and profitability, which is really different than the way that it's historically been done and, and how they do work-life balance Mm -hmm. and, you know, how they manage to do this farming and non-farming partners have different expectations, those kinds of things. So we're just, we're talking about the people side. Yeah. And that ties so well together with the work that you are so passionate about. Uh, it's all part of the same thing. It's, all it's part like of the same thing. I'd love for you to talk more on that identity piece because that seems yeah. to be what is drawn to me. That identity piece, like you said, like lawyer who becomes the farmer, you who was working in corporate for so many years to I am now doing this. Like that identity shift, that transformation that happens, that grieving like a lot of people don't talk about that part oh totally oh yeah I, I, we'll get to the grieving part. I'll, I'll swing back around to the grieving part <laughs> Yeah. So, so it's interesting because I felt this for myself, but I've brought it up in the podcast a few times with folks. I felt like being a farmer was a calling for me Mm -hmm. and I'm a a fairly non-denominational person. It wasn't necessarily a religious calling, but it was a bigger than me calling. It was definitely a faith calling of some kind of like, this is what I meant to do. I thought that meant be a veterinarian because I wanted to work with animals. Mm -hmm. And really it was eventually I realized, no, no, I want to be a farmer. I want to take care of animals. That's, that's what I feel called to do. That is just a part of me. And, and that is a conversation that I've brought up several times with different folks. And, and it is, it's like, there's that spark. There's something that draws us in and the experiences have all been so, so different. I mean, sometimes it is because there was a neighbor who was a farmer or sometimes there are people who actually go away. Like maybe they did grow up on a farm as little kids. They've gone away to school and then realized like it drew them back in a way that they never expected. And sometimes it's just falling into the right book (laughs) or meeting people and just wanting to be part of the solution. I think that that's part of this Mm -hmm. is people feeling like they want to be part of a solution. And the identity piece is really interesting because it's a thing that I struggled with for easily 50. I mean, I've been farming 22 years and I would say probably 15 years of that. I struggled with identity of like, when am I going to be a real farmer? People used to ask me that. I used to work for university extension. So I worked directly with farmers as my job. And I would work with a lot of women farmers. I thought it was a women farmer identity thing, but it wasn't. It's just all kinds of new and beginning farmers or folks who didn't grow up in this. That identity piece is really wild because it has this, it's like, I struggled for such a long time. Like, am I a real farmer? When am I going to be a real farmer? Am I a real farmer now? This same thing happened. The same thing has happened over and over. And and I, I don't know if that is, I don't know if that's a gender-based thing. Are we continually like asking, are we enough? Like, is our identity enough? Are we enough? I don't know if that's built in, but I know that the change in identity really hit me too. Like when I went from being a university extension person and also a farmer, I was like, oh, well, I'm not a real farmer because my day job is being a university extension person. And then when I sort of switched those things and I left my full-time job and I started doing some like freelance consulting and full-time farming and agritourism, like we host people who stay at our farm. And like, I just had all these enterprises and all these things. And I was like, and a podcaster, (laughs) 
all of that together, I'm like, what am I? Like, what is my identity? I definitely felt this weird sense of like loss, which I finally figured out was like a grief process of leaving a, a long career and the identity attached to that. And I was like, what am I if I'm not an extension person? Who am I? What do I want to be when I grow up? Even though that was actually what I wanted to be when I grew up at the time. And then I kept continuing to grow up and then it just sort of made sense to not be there anymore. It's weird. I, I feel a lot more fluid in my identity now, like in the, in the sense of like, I could be a podcaster. I could be this. I could be that. As long as my identity, the piece of my identity that I want to really hold on to now is that like the heart-based identity of what I do or how I express it can be fluid, but I am here to help people. I don't know what format that's going to take. <laughs> it might be lots of different forms, but it's, I'm really here to help people be successful and have good quality of life. Because I don't think there's such a thing as success without quality of life, but we don't always talk about that. And I yeah. wrote it down when you said, when am I going to be X, Y, Z? Because so often we don't fully step in. We don't fully <laughs> step in. We say we want something. And sometimes the very thing that we say we want is also the very thing that we fear. And so with that fear, I think it leads us to not fully step in. So when we finally decide to give ourselves that permission to finally step in and say, this is it, period. <laughs> and it's that self-concept piece of we are what we say we are. What we believe we are is what we are. So whatever we choose to stay, those words have so much power. I think you're absolutely right. And I think I talked myself out of that power for years and years. Just, I was like, well, when am I going to be this? And I would be like, I didn't understand that as soon as I said that and I owned it and I was that. I didn't, I didn't get that until like 20 minutes ago. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> relatively recently just yeah. recognizing and I mean I even went through it through it this last sort of the same kind of a thing this last fall so my husband and I have been going through a training to a certification training for learning how to teach people the Canfield method of success principles but also like the way that the Canfield training program how they teach which is really so much of what we learned was how they teach which is you know very interactive and very like person base, like the person does a lot of work themselves and which just really resonated with us, us personally. Somehow I didn't feel like I could do this and mm -hmm. teach other people this until I was certified, which is wacky because we've been working on it for five years. We've been practicing these principles for five years. They're super familiar. We work on them every single day. Why did I need a little seal <laughs> in order to run a workshop? Is that conditioning piece. And I'm right there with you. Right hey, there with you. I've lived right? my full life of 35 years changing and moving and grooving. But when I hear to raise my hand and want to help people do the same thing that I've lived, I'm like, who can sign this permission slip for me to do this? I went right? and did that. I've done, I've got a few permission slips. <laughs> Right. I'm not going to lie. There's a few permission slips <laughs> that I had to get to give myself that stamp of approval. Yeah. And that's why I think it's so important for us to talk about this because we get to validate ourselves. We get to say, I'm raising my hand and I'm stepping fully in. And that's the power in our words and the way we choose and decide. But we're not taught that at all. We're conditioned to think that if we go to school and do all the things and we're going to have this great life, with the white picket fence, and that's not the way life is anymore. And that's not the way I think we're even going. I don't know if it ever was. <laughs> I think that's the, like the myth that we're told is that there was a white picket fence and everything was great. Well, it maybe it was for some people, but it was not for lots of people. I love that you say that it was a myth because yeah, it was the ideal. It was the, it was the holy grail. It was, this is what, this is what we want. It sounds so perfect, right? And now we're learning that we have to peel back these conditionings, these old beliefs, these old thoughts that aren't true, never probably were true and decide on what is true for us. And for everybody, it's so individualized. Yeah. Is that what you found for yourself? Absolutely. I feel like, yeah. So, and it's, and it's wild to be going along on this, on this like path. Path, real path of self-discovery with myself and my husband. And we have, I mean, we've been together for a very long time. We knew each other when we were kids. We got married when we were 20. We've been married 
32 years. We are we're good and we're close and we we talk and we have a great relationship and we have very sim- we're very similar. We're born three days apart. In many ways, you'd be like, oh well, what are the big differences? But the wild thing is, as we as we go through this self discovery, I'm working on very different things from my life, my start, my experience, and he is working on really different things. And we are drawn to different things. Yeah. We have these overlaps, but it is just this is an individual journey. Yeah. It, I mean, we can we can walk beside each other, mm-hmm. but like, and we should. I mean, I actually think that that part is really yeah. important because yeah. self discovery alone is actually kind of a bummer. You're like, but I want to share it with somebody, and like, mm-hmm. want to. And that's how the breakthroughs too is when you're sharing your findings. Yes. Is the breakthroughs and the aha moments because you're speaking it out and it's coming out of you, and so you're able to experience it with a fullness Absolutely. where if you're hiding in your cocoon and doing it by yourself pen to paper like am I going crazy in my own little <laughs> cocoon like right because right? <laughs> exactly. I tried to do it alone too and I thought I'm not going to share these horrible experiences I'm not going to share my deepest belief that I'm not enough I'm not going to share that right. but it's in that sharing that you are human you get to yes. see that there's others like you that are going through the exact same thing as you I love that you and your husband have been together for so long that was like one of my <laughs> favorite stories that you to- ever told me I think it's so amazing <laughs> the fact that you guys have been together for 35 years I celebrate that I think that oh. is wow that's amazing because Thank Thank a lot of us it's like love like that's my biggest wish dream come true that was yeah. all I ever wanted as a child for me it yeah. was like Prince Charming, you know, <laughs> that's all I ever wanted. So love is a big dream come true. And so I would love for you to speak a little bit on how you yeah. and your husband are able to walk side by side on this journey, because it's not normal. Yeah. <laughs> One person will sign up and be like, I'm all in. And the other person's like, Arr. you got to drag them kicking and pulling usually. <laughs> Totally. Oh, wow. This is a really big question. And because we have been together such a long time, I think that we've experienced both sides of that because, and I talk about this, well, we actually did an interview on the podcast about being a farmer and a non-farmer and being married. The journey of self-discovery is is more recent, but back, you know, years ago when I really was, was drawn to start this farm and just sort of raise a few animals and do some things and grow and grow and grow. I had this picture in my head, this like romantic picture in my head of Chris and I farming together and, you know, carrying buckets and it being, you know, fun and doing chores together. And he has never had interest in being a farmer. He really said that like right from the beginning, but I didn't hear it. Like I really didn't listen very well. And so I would like go outside and do chores and I would be out there for a while doing chores and it would be cold or it would be dark or whatever, you know, or muddy or icky or whatever. And I would be like really resentful because he would be in the house. Warm and cozy. (laughs) Warm and cozy. Maybe he'd be making dinner. Maybe he'd be watching TV, playing a video game, whatever like it was. And I would just be really resentful about that. And it was, it was me not listening to him. And he was really upfront. Like, I just, I don't want to do this. I am happy to make you dinner so that you have a nice hot dinner when you come in from doing something cold and gross and you don't want to make food and you're so happy because you have something hot to eat like that. He's like, I want that role, but I don't want to be doing chores with you. That took like 15 plus years to sort of realize that like, okay, he told me he used the words. I just didn't listen. And, And then he went for a period of time like we were he had a passionate hobby of competitive barbecue, which I went a- along with and, and we did together for a while, but also it was more his passion than my passion. And, and we ended up in this really weird dynamic of like, no, you come help me with my thing. No, you come help me with my thing. And there was like this crazy tension that we that we had. And again, I really don't think it was us listening to each other. And, and at that point, neither of us had really started to drill down on our stuff. Like we always talked well, I mean, we talked well from like day one and we, we talked about deep stuff, but, but we didn't really start like pulling away and looking at like family trauma and personal trauma and just belief systems and limiting beliefs that we didn't do any of that real work until about five, 
six years ago, we really started to work on that. And that's when, that's when we started to evolve in, in parallel, but separately. And one of the best things that we established was we established a habit of morning tea or morning beverage, and we would sit and read in the same space, we might not talk or we might talk. And like the space is there, it's before the workday starts. I recognize this is not always easy for people with toddlers. <laughs> It's the benefit to us that our son is grown now. And we still do this. Like we sit and we just have our first beverage and we read or we think or we write or we do whatever, but we do it near each other. Mm -hmm. And then we just keep the space open. Like if one of us is like, I just read this. I mean, I'm rereading Happy Money right now by Ken Honda. Great book. This morning I was like reading this, rereading this passage. And I was like, oh, hey, hon, you know what I just realized about this limiting belief I had, or that limiting belief I had, or this thing that my dad said, or my whatever. Just to be able to talk about that has been huge. But his path is really different than my path. He's had different traumas in his life than I have. And he is just, he's drawn much more into energy work and Qigong and movement and that kind of healing energy movement. And I am so drawn to like people's brains and how we think. And yeah, which is cool because so far we're attracted to things that are okay. complementary. Yeah. yeah. So you can't have one without the other. You can't. Honestly. I don't think that you can. And oh, I tried. Like, I tried for years. It was all mindset work, mindset work. Because I just get my mindset right. Mindset right. Yes. I didn't want to look at the shadow. I didn't want to look at the dark, deep stuff. I didn't want to look at my trauma. What? Let's just put that down and let's just work on our mindset and make it happy and positive as can be. Totally. To the outside world, then you look like this happy, positive person, but then inside you're basically dead. And so I love that you're yeah. speaking to that you both started doing your work. So then you were able to hear each other. Totally. And and we, one, we made an absolute effort to listen to each other and to use our voices. And we started to do like some energy chakra work and understanding some of that. And he had like an overactive throat chakra. He would just talk, 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 talk. He would talk over me. I had like a completely underdeveloped throat chakra. I would just like get silent. I would not express myself. I would feel resentful. There was all of this. And when we both started to to notice and, and, and just sort of, and he would be like, I'm going to listen. And I would be like, I'm really uncomfortable right now, but I will speak. <laughs> and sometimes I would speak and he'd be like, murk, murk, murk. you know, he sort of be grumpy about it. And I was like, look, you said that I should speak. And that is what I am doing. <laughs> and that's our power. When we do those type of works to heal the parts of ourselves that are the motion is not moving. There's no flow. It's blocked. Huge. It's huge because then we get to do that with a partner together. And so like my mission ever since I started to do this work was I'm taking my husband with me. Like I am not going up this ladder alone, like come with me, join me here. And it has been a pull, <laughs> a big push and pull and come, come, come. Because I realized that if you're not growing together, totally. you are growing apart. Totally. And so I love that we're having totally. this conversation to give moms and even dads that are listening hope that you can grow together. And if you are apart at the moment, there's hope to coming back together once you want to do the work to be together. Totally. And I mean, we've, we've been together for so long too, that we've been, I don't know, because we found each other literally at birth. I mean, like literally actually, like we were born in the same hospital next to each other Amazing. practically. It's crazy. We didn't grow up together though, but we found each other at such a young age and we're committed to each other at such a young age that I feel like, you know, I've had plenty of friends say, oh, you're so lucky you found each other. So all of that. And and we are lucky, but there have been so many moments of, of like growing apart. Like I said, taking in new passions and new like hobbies and things that would take our time. Chris, I think it's okay to say this. Like, you know, Chris, Chris said to me recently, we were having really great deep discussion and some guided meditation as part of a program that we were doing. You know, he's going really deeply into energy work. And he said, I'm really afraid that I'm just going to be so separate from 
I'm just going to leave everyone behind because I'm, he didn't say it as like floating up and up and up, but I, I, that's sort of the vibe that I was getting was like, he's like, what happens if I'm like so separate that, that I am alone to express that was huge. And I felt like I was finally in a place to, to really be able to hear it too. And, and be like, no, this is, this is where we're at together. We don't have to do the same thing to still be together. It is such a conscious choice. We don't have to be in the same place as the other person. But the conscious choice part is to still be learning and growing. And that's such a fear. That's such a fear. Like even for me, as I said, like I didn't want to go. I didn't want to expand and leave my husband behind. I didn't want to expand and leave my family behind. And so what I've been doing is dragging everybody behind me. And what I'm learning is we can't even do that. No, We have to give them the choice. Right. Yeah. And we have to kind of surrender that dragging that forcing because it's not in our control and we're a control freak a little bit that's hard to do right (laughs) that's hard to do so that is a fear that I am right there with your husband saying like oh my gosh what happens but we have to believe that for me what comes through when I think about that is we're in a loving universe that wants nothing but the best for us and the highest good of all and so if we're at our best then we can only uplift everybody right so even the people that we think we're leaving behind we're truly doing them a service because we can hear them differently. We can hold space for them differently. And so we'll never, I feel in my heart yeah. that we'll never truly leave them behind. We won't leave them behind because we can't, we can't leave the ones that we truly, truly want. So yeah. So take yeah. a lesson for me. Don't drag soft invitations. I had this great, she may even eventually listen to this podcast, but I'll be curious. I used to be really interested in personal development stuff and listen to the secret and was, you know, really starting to learn different kinds of things. And this was, this was like some years ago, I was like dabbling and just sort of like opening my mind a little bit. And I kept being so excited to share them with my mom. I would like, you know, get her a little present. Here's this book I read, like you get her a little CD. Here's the CD. I think you might find it interesting. And she finally said, stop, stop giving me those things. I don't want them. And I was so like, I don't want to say hurt, like it reflected on me, but I was so sad about that for a really long time. And because I, I could just see potential or see possibilities that, that she didn't see in herself. And I eventually stopped doing that, but just like, just like, so I felt like that's, that's my dragging. Like that's my, (laughs) that's my version of your, what you're talking about dragging. And now I'm just like, so I guess I'm just going to live and I'm just going to love my mom and I'm just going to support her in every way that I can. And it's not going to be that stuff. And if she asks or she, you know, how can I, I just want to love her maybe. And maybe that is the lesson for me is that it's not that other stuff. It's just loving her. It's all of us. It's all <laughs> That's of us. what she That's, needs. It's, yeah. It's for all of us to hear that message of love. Like as we expand, as we, for me, it's like a expanding and going higher. As we do that, we are more loving. We are open right? to be more compassionate. And so if we're open to being compassionate, we can't leave the ones we love behind. Mm-mm. So yeah, I love that, that message. It's such a, it's such a powerful one. So you yeah. have a workshop coming up that is called the whole human talk about yes. change and this transformation. I would love for you to speak on that. Thank you. In the last year, like six months to a year, my husband and I have just had these 180 degree changes in realizing what we want to do and what we want to become and how we want to show up in the world and how we want to help people moving forward for the next 20, 30, 40 years. That has, you know, some of this is the success work uh, that we've already been practicing. Some of it is energy work. Some of it is, you know, some other kinds of facilitations and, and skills that we're going to be, we're planning to be building over the course of the next couple of years. So we're just, we're getting started in our new business, which is whole human healing and transformation. And we feel really strongly that, that if we only focus on our minds and we only focus on our careers and we only focus in these places that get really emphasized and and we're ignoring our bodies, we're ignoring our energy, we're ignoring the fullness of our wholeness. Well, we're going to get sick. 
Maybe we are already sick. We're not going to be happy. We're not going to have good quality of life. We're not going to have, we're not going to be satisfied. And that's the thing. There's this like dissatisfaction. When we're not whole, there is this incredible dissatisfaction. There's like this itchy sort of uncomfortableness that happens when we're not feeling whole. And so our first foray into that is offering a half day workshop on, you know, and it's virtual. So it can be people from anywhere. It's only a half day. So it's not a huge time commitment. And it's really just intended to spark some of the practicing, some of the principles that we've been practicing over the last five years that have helped us be happier together and be happier, you know, as, as individuals. Yeah. So who are you calling in? Who is this for? It's for people who are stuck. I feel it's, it's for people who are stuck. It's, it's for people who are in kind of a, of a transition, but they don't know where, what that transition is. It's for people who feel that itch. So I, so I was, I was chatting with someone just this morning about the course. And she said, I feel like I need something new. I need some change, but I've been, every time I think about something, I've been stuck with these voices in my head saying, no, no, you can't do that. This is why you can't do this thing. This is why you can't do that thing. And she's like, but so I never get started because I just feel stuck. I just feel like the voices tell me it's not a good dream or it's not a good idea, or I can't do it for these 13 reasons or, and that's exactly who this is for. It's for people who are in a transition and they're looking for something or people who've just come out of something and they're looking for what's next. So that's so it. People right now that are needing just this. And so that is so amazing that this is what you have put out into the world. And you said it was January 28th. It is January 28th and it's middle of the day, Eastern time. So hopefully it works for folks in multiple time zones as well. And it'll be entirely online and we'll have some materials afterwards too, but it's really live. And so that's the benefit of it is that we get folks who are interacting with each other and there's, there's trust and bonding that gets built into it. And it's really engaging and people are doing personal work and they're sharing and it's really empowering. That's, the piece of this that that we really want people to leave with is feeling like they are empowered to move forward in whatever direction that they want to move forward. It's like not up to us to prescribe what any of that is, what is right for somebody. Like the, the whole concept of success is so self defined. That could be the CEO. That could be the person who runs an awesome nursery school. That could be anybody doing anything. It's not up to us to decide that. It's up to us to help people figure out what they define as success and then to help them feel empowered to move forward to oh, whatever this, that is. This conversation has lit me up and made me feel so good inside. Jen, thank yeah. you so much for being oh, here and sharing Jesse, your light you. with us. I would love for you to tell our listeners where they can get in contact with you, where they can join you for this beautiful workshop. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. So, so our website is morewholehumans.com. That's one place that they can find the course and sign up for it. And then if they'd like to listen to the farmer podcast, if you happen to have any farmer listeners that's the choosing to farm.com website beautiful thank you thank you thank you hugs love thank, oh, you. thank you so much josie love talking with you so much thank you for being part of the self-love movement your support and care matters here please be sure to subscribe review and share and get your ultimate daily planner freebie today by visiting makewifefunpodcast.com. When you're ready to step deeper into my vibration and work together, go to backrosecoaching.com. Thank you again for listening. See you next time.